Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in just a minute. And then on the 6th of March, we will have the network premiere of the fight between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe, where Bowe won the heavyweight title. And Alex Wallow, we're back here at ringside, and, and you were at the Thomas and Mack Center back in November in Las Vegas when Riddick Bowe beat Evander Holyfield and in one of the fine heavyweight fights of all time. Yeah, it really was a surprise to me. It turned out to be this good a fight. I mean, there were two undefeated men in the ring, Evander making his fourth title offense at age 30, Riddick making his first try for a title at age 25. Uh, Riddick had a huge weight, 235 pounds, 30-pound advantage over Evander Holyfield. Round one, Evander came out like the champion and dominated, but then Riddick got on track. He swept rounds two, three, and four, and by the time we finished round nine, Dan, Riddick Bowe was ahead by one, two, and three points on the judges' scorecard and seemed in control of the fight. Well, the fight went the distance to 12, but one of the great rounds in heavyweight history was the 10th round, and Alex, here it is back in the 11th of November from Las Vegas. Yeah, and you see the uppercut there by Riddick Bowe. That had been a key punch for him throughout the fight. Good stiff jab by Bowe. The uppercut was important for Riddick because Evander, for, for reasons, tactical reasons known best to himself, chose to fight this. Oh, and there's the uppercut that really hurt Evander and started him downhill. I mean, at this point, it just looked like it was a matter of moments before the fight would be over and Evander a knockout victim. Right there, Riddick. people are wondering what's holding Holyfield up. It's just the, the lioness courage of the man, Alex. Yeah, I remember sitting there thinking he just, I mean, it's a cliche, but he just refused to go down. And right now, Riddick Bowe has tried everything, has really thrown everything he has, and he's tired. That first minute of round 10 was just exhausting for, for, uh, for Holyfield, obviously, but for Riddick Bowe, as you see right there, he's looking over his corner, wondering, what do I have to do to stop this guy? And he's amazed that he still has something to lean on. And amazingly, it's going to be Evander Holyfield who's going to show signs of life in the second half of round 10. It's a thing that our uh, predecessor, Howard Cosell, used to talk about all the time to make a great fight was ebb and flow, shifting tides of fortune. Oh, not you too. And that's exactly what this round had. I mean, that's what made it a great round. You had all bow for the first minute, and now Evander Holyfield, outmatched in terms of youth, outmatched in terms of size, outmatched in terms of skill, but showing in this round and in this fight, I think, that in defeat, why he was a fighter who got every ounce of what he had. Look at him come back here. And with a minute left in the round, suddenly it looked like it was Bo who was in trouble. A good right hand from Evander Holyfield that time. And you're right. And, and when you see the two of them in the ring, the size advantage of Riddick Bo becomes so apparent. And it makes it even more remarkable that Evander Holyfield survived the onslaught that came his way in the first minute of round 10. Both men obviously exhausted. And to understand what this round meant, Dan, you have to realize that they fought hard for the nine rounds prior to this. This wasn't just one great round. This was the best round in a series of great rounds. Let's go. Rico, I don't want you holding, guy. Let's go. Two beautiful two-punch combination by Evander Holyfield. Dan, the amazing thing about this round was that one judge actually scored the round for Evander Holyfield. Well, you can see why. It's the lasting impression in the last minute of this round certainly belonged to Holyfield. The best round that I saw in a heavyweight title fight since the 15th round with Larry Holmes and Kenny Norton. Unbelievable. Don't forget that we'll be back here ringside to have a conversation with Oscar De La Hoya. And coming up, John Saunders is going to talk to Riddick Bowe. Stay with us. More to come on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Let's go, everyone. We'll get you back to San Diego in just a moment. Welcome back to Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York, home of the heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe. When he won the championship three months ago, he weighed 235 pounds. Tonight, when he fights Michael Doak, Riddick Bowe will weigh 243 pounds. In fact, Mike Tyson said from prison he is ashamed of Riddick Bowe. One of his running mates here in Brooklyn says he should not fight at that heavy weight. But despite the weight, despite what Mike Tyson says, Riddick Bowe says he is not taking Michael Doak lightly. Each fight for me is the most important fight. 
And I feel like Michael Dokes brings a great challenge to the ring. I have something that he wants, and I can't allow him to just come in and take it. So uh, I anticipate a great fight while it lasts, but I think um, when it's all over, I will still be heavyweight champion of the world. Do you look at his desire and realize here's a guy who was on drugs while he was fighting, kicked that, now has a second chance, and, and does that keep you aware of the fact that this is a guy who will be prepared? Well, most definitely. Uh, that just goes to show you how determined he is. He's got his weight down. Uh, he looks pretty good. And um, uh, anytime Michael Douglas comes to fight, he fights. He claims he will be your worst nightmare. Response to that? Well, I got a right hand that's going to wake him up. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with wishful thinking. you have personal uh, feelings about Lennox Lewis? Of course I do. Um, Lennox knows that uh, I'm the better man. I'm the better man that now, even though he has a, a portion of the title. But um, one day he'll wake up and realize it. I, I thought it was impressive, and, and a lot of people will disagree with me because I know a lot of people disagreed with, with you when you did this. But uh, in dedicating a fight to Mike Tyson and, and saying it's time to forgive Mike Tyson, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, I think you know, when a person does something wrong, and if he's serving his time and after doing that, he realizes that it was wrong, and if he can become a better person for it, why hold it against him? Uh, trips to Somalia to see the Pope, to see Nelson Mandela. Uh, is this something that's a, a product of you becoming the heavyweight champion? It's a great opportunity to, to help people and to go to Somalia to, to help the people out there and to meet a great guy like Nelson Mandela. There's a lot of pressure on you and a lot of people who want a piece of you now. Uh, how do you avoid having happened to you what's happened to a string of, of champions since Ali? Well, I don't mind saying no. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm a nice guy and I try to treat people nice, but sometimes, you know, there's a limit to everything. Uh, will people see the real Riddick Bell? Well, I, I think my personality, the way it is, people always see the real me. I don't try to be a, a tough guy or someone who's very soft. Okay, I'm a playful person, and that's what you see, and that's what you get. Riddick Bowe and Michael Dokes, that's tonight from Madison Square Garden. Right now, for more on Oscar De La Hoya, let's return to San Diego to Dan and Alex. All right, Alex, that fight is tonight at the Garden. I think a lot of people will be interested in your thoughts. Well, uh, whatever, t uh, you know, talent Michael Dokes had was after years of cocaine addiction and knockout losses, terrible knockout losses to Holyfield and Razor Ruddick, I mean, he's not a credible opponent. I think the thing to watch for tonight is Riddick Bowe. After getting with the program in such a great way to, to win the title, it'll be interesting to see if Riddick stays with the program, stays focused and disciplined, uh, and maximizes the kind of natural talent he has. And I think that's the key, really, to, to how long he'll have as a reign as a heavyweight champion.